You can use schedules to automatically keep track of all sorts of important building information from quantities for windows, doors, and other components to areas and square footages for rooms. There are too many options for creating schedules to show you all of them, but I'm going to show you the basics of how it's done. We'll make a door schedule, a window schedule, and a room schedule. All right, to create a schedule, I'm going to switch to the View tab of the ribbon and click on the schedule icon. This brings up the new schedule window. The first thing to do here is to choose a category for the schedule. I'm going to choose doors, and I can give the schedule a name, but door schedule will work fine. So I'll simply leave the rest of the properties at the defaults, and I'll click OK to begin defining the schedule properties. Now there are quite a few options here for defining the schedule properties. You can see the various tabs at the top of the dialog box. So the first tab, and arguably the most important tab in this window, is the Fields tab. And you can specify which fields you like the schedule to contain from the list. I'm looking for four specific fields for doors. The mark, the family, the type, and finally a comments field. You can reorder the fields by selecting the field you'd like to move and using the Move Up and Move Down icons. Now once the fields are ordered the way I'd like, I'll leave everything else at the defaults and press OK to create the schedule. When I do, I'm immediately taken to the Modify Schedule panel and the schedule is open in the workspace. Alright, on the schedule you can see all the different doors in the project. Now the nice thing about Revit and schedules is they're parametrically linked. Let me show you what I mean. Notice right now the comments fields are all completely blank. I'll switch to the 3D view and select one of the doors in the project. Now I can go into its properties and notice there's a comment section. I'll add a comment to this door, say front entry deadbolt. And I'll repeat the process for a few more doors too, just so you see what I mean. I'm going to select the garage door and give it a comment, say, no lock. And I'll select the bathroom and add a comment stating, privacy lock. Alright, so once I'm done, I can get back to the schedule by double-clicking it in the browser. Notice the comments appear right away and are associated with the correct door mark. One thing I'd like to mention quickly is that each door in the project has its own row in the schedule. Okay, they're not all grouped together. This is pretty common because even though the doors may be the same type, like single flush, they could have different locks or some other property that you didn't specify directly in the model. Alright, let's create a window schedule and I'll show you how to group all the windows of the same type together. I'll again click the schedule icon from the view tab on the ribbon and this time I'm going to choose windows for the category and I'm going to add a few fields type mark family type and count in that order. Now before I click OK, let's take a look at some of the other important properties. The filter options let you further control what's shown in the schedule on top of the fields you specified already. I'm going to leave them blank and switch over to the sorting and grouping tab. I want to sort the window schedule by type mark, so I'll choose that from the drop down. We'll look at the formatting tab a bit more when we create the room schedule, okay? And the Appearance tab lets you control the font, size, grid lines, and other appearance options. So I'll click OK to create the schedule. Now the window schedule looks OK, and you can see that all the windows are sorted by type mark. However, I want to group all of the windows of the same type together, and there's an easy way to do this. If I look in the Properties under Other, notice there are Edit buttons for each of the tabs in the window. So I'll click the Sorting and Grouping Edit button. This takes me to the same window we were at when we first created the schedule. I'll uncheck the Itemize Every Instance checkbox and click OK. And now the schedule looks the way we want. 
So, before concluding this lesson, let's create a room schedule. All right, I'll again click the schedule icon, choose rooms for the category, and press OK. For the fields, I use number, name, and area in that order. Now I'll click over to the Sorting and Grouping tab and activate the Grand Totals checkbox so that we can see the total area of the rooms. Before I click OK, I have to format the Area field, so I click the Formatting tab and select the Area field. I could rename the heading or switch the alignment and orientation, but all I really need to do here is check the Calculate Totals box for the Area field. And when I click OK, you can see the schedule. The total area of all the rooms here is just over 1,650 square feet.